Well, hold on. Let me let me try to figure this out. Trying to put glasses on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, what is he doing? <laughs> Welcome to My Gotta Podcast. I'm Jim Wood. In this episode, John Powell and I preview the season opening matchup between the number five Georgia Bulldogs and the number three Clemson Tigers in the Duke's Mayo Classic in Charlotte, North Carolina. As always, remember you can follow us on social media at My Gotta Podcast. And if you like what you hear, please subscribe, rate, five stars obviously, and review the show. If you leave us a review, you just might hear it on an upcoming episode. Now, let's join the conversation in progress. I am actually drinking the, I figured I'd go with the um, Georgia whiskey. I've got um, American Spirit Whiskey Duality uh, for the evening. See, this is where I need to... It's a nice little smoky bourbon. This is where I need to expand my collection because I can't say things like that. (laughs) This is my Georgia (laughs) bourbon. I have like three, so... (laughs) For the record, it is the only Georgia bourbon that I own currently, unless you count the one that I'm aging in that uh, oak bottle by itself. I've got... Which is... Oh, actually, I take that back. I've got Old Fourth Ward as well, although uh, full transparency, I'm not a huge fan of it. Well, I'm, I'm going with the Maker's Mark 46, which is one of the... Can't go wrong. One of your recommendations. My, my Knob Creek 9 is just about out. There's like... I don't even think there's like a full pour left in it so i need to go Mm -hmm. replenish that and then i'll see what else is you know when i get over there you'll get a text from me with like pictures of what i'm looking at (laughs) so you can tell me what to buy do we need to like i do every time do we need to save do we need to have like a a meetup to to purchase bourbon for you on uh on friday Ooh, that's a good idea (laughs) that's a good idea. bourbon uh, a bourbon meetup bourbon (laughs) meetup grab some lunch uh, I think we, I think I can make that work. So like I said, I'm gonna I'm planning to take the day off. So okay. you can make that work. Uh, so the funny thing, or a funny thing, many funny things I think happened last time we talked. But a funny thing <laughs> was was when I started. Like the first thing I said to you was, "We're here, we made it." But then I was like, "Well, were we?" That was a kind of a week early. So now we're here, we made it. It is game week. Finally, after. Although I say finally, I do feel like the offseason, I don't know, I feel like it did go kind of fast. Like I do, like it always seems so far away until the season gets here. And then it's like, where did the time go? Um, So I don't know. It's always interesting. And I will add that this is the second straight recording where the Georgia player who we tweeted out from our podcast account with our countdown gif interacted with it so last last recording we were 10 days out and kiaris retweeted our gif and today we're as of recording so we're recording monday we're five days out and garrison Hurst retweeted our gif and then he tagged us like he like posted it himself on instagram and tagged us so that was cool so garrison if you ever want to come on open invite <laughs> yeah absolutely would love to would love to chat it up with with one of the the true greats at, at the university of georgia and the nfl for that matter um yeah that that was that was pretty cool that actually took some effort to post on on instagram i feel like because i wasn't like a yeah it's not it's not like an easy transfer (laughs) i agree i was kind of like man how do you do that i need to post it on instagram (laughs) because like i I, you know with the social media stuff i know obviously we're the most active on twitter and I'm always trying to figure out like what can we do on Instagram and like what can we do on Facebook because it not everything translates, you know. And so like with the gifts, you can't really post a gift. But I think he, he posted it as a video, so yes, I, I can start doing that. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's true. Me, that's true. Trying to be more active on the socials. We picked up. We definitely picked up some Instagram followers though after uh, Garrison tagged us in that. So I don't know. That was that's pretty well, cool. Well. It helped that there were some other players. You know, you had Washon Yui. That's right. Um, yeah. You had Tavares. You had, and then my, my personal favorite on his post was Pastor Troy. <laughs> yes. Uh, ain't, ain't no more play in GA himself. Uh, jumped in with a nice little little laugh. He had, he had a little chuckle out of that gif, I think. Um, Pastor Troy would love to have you on as well. So, Absolutely. 
Yeah, that was that was pretty funny. So for those who haven't seen it, obviously you gotta definitely need to follow us on social media. Uh, we've been doing a. Uh, I haven't hit every day, but we've been doing most of the days. We're doing a countdown with the different players. And so today's was Garrison Hurst running into the hedges and hugging everyone right behind the hedges from, I think you asked me today, like, when was that from? And I said, I'd have to look it up and I never got around to it. I, well, cause I, that one's been in the back pocket for like a month. <laughs> I've been holding on to that one for the five days of the countdown. I've been like waiting and waiting to post that one. So uh, I think it was from 92. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's from 92, but anyway. Hey, maybe he can come on and tell us about it. <laughs> right. True, true, true. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, so yeah. So, uh, Clemson week. Uh, it's here. Game week. Game week is here in, in the city I live in. Kind of. I guess that's that'd be like you saying you live in Atlanta, but close enough. I live just outside of Charlotte. And, um, I don't know, you'll be here. Frip Dog will be here. Uh, the text thread will be here. Uh, the entirety of Georgia Twitter is going to be there. Dog Twitter will be here. <laughs> and, and, and then, and then also game day, college game day will be here, but more importantly, dog Twitter, I think. <laughs> we'll have to find Kirk Herb Street and heckle him. That actually sounds like a nice Georgia Twitter activity. That could be a nice little tourist activity. Yeah, I know. I had talked to Graham Coffee, and I think he was saying that he wanted to go by uh, game day. He was asking me if I was going to go over there. So, I honestly, Where I think I probably. Where are they setting probably, up? I I don't even know. I have to look that up. I don't. I don't know. Probably right by ATD ATD tailgate because it's got a great view of the stadium. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, seriously, Greg. Like with that video, are you kidding me? Uh, like he was, he was showing like this field, and I was sitting, I was thinking to myself, "Golly, this thing looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. Like where, where are we going?" And then he turns around. It's like, oh, it's literally right there. Yeah. <laughs> that was impressive. That was a nice yeah. reveal that he did of that. That was awesome. That was a pretty solid reveal. Uh, <laughs> but I will say, like you know, I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe I'm just like old school. But the the allure, the allure and the prestige, I mean, obviously there's still prestige because it's on ESPN, but like the allure of college game day just isn't the same as it was. Oh like, yeah, no. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, it's almost like MTV, you know what I mean? Like MTV was huge <laughs> and you had like the TRL countdown or whatever. And it was like mm-hmm. a big deal when we were younger like it was like what everybody talked about it was like what you did like oh yeah did you watch this yeah yeah we totally did it was awesome yeah um but now it's like college game day you know like we made a huge deal out of making those signs for the alabama blackout game back at back then Mm -hmm. and like you could make your own signs you could still like make the funny signs you could have the penis pointing at lee corso's (laughs) head all those things were like that's what made that's what made college game day amazing was being able to make fun of Kirk Herb Street while he was live on the air with like yeah <laughs> you know right right um, well and I, I think, think now I think, like uh, so much of it like it's like you don't have to watch it anymore right because anything that happens it's going to be a clip that's going to show up on social media or whatever somewhere right so like you don't have to watch the whole thing like you used to you know. That's true. Yeah, you don't have to watch it. You can just kind of st- you could actually stream it from your phone uh, uh, from the tailgate and not actually be there. <laughs> uh, true. Right. Exactly. We couldn't do that on our we couldn't do that on our Nokia's back in college. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we have to specify that it was the Nokia with the replaceable faceplate that clearly you had like the Georgia faceplate <laughs> on the front that phone clearly. that like everyone had. <laughs> Uh, it might, maybe it was a flip phone. I'm not sure. It could have been a razor. Maybe you were cutting edge and had that Motorola razor. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Everyone had like the friend that had a razor. I had the. Nokia. All I know is that all I know is those batteries lasted for like a week, <laughs> <laughs> and they were built like tanks. Uh, but you had to watch your minutes. You definitely had to watch your minutes. <laughs> so don't call me. I'm not to run out of minutes. Hold on. Call me in like five minutes when my nighttime. Uh, <laughs> Oh my gosh! Uh, let's see. While we're already off the rails, I'm just kidding. <laughs> did you see that? Uh, I don't know if you watched any of the Week Zero games, which the games are pretty much garbage. So the thing that jumped out to me though was we saw the first uh, 
Dr. Pepper Fansville commercial uh, aired. Did you see that? And they had DJ Uy Ungalale. Full transparency, I saw zero college football with the exception of a handful of plays of the Ra- uh, of the. Well, I guess it doesn't count as college football. I saw Gunnar Stockton play yeah. uh, a little bit. Yep, um, me too. Aside from that, I didn't watch any college football because, the, as you know, and as we discussed last week, um, Carter was at a – my son was at a – you know, the most famous podcaster for my got a podcast, Carter Powell, was um, at a soccer tournament this past weekend. And that was a consuming endeavor – for the entire weekend for the most part. Yeah. Um, there was a pool. We had, we had a pool. We had some downtime, but the TV by the pool was busted and we were just hanging out and enjoying it. It was his birthday kind of, it was part of his birthday kind of celebration. Mm. So we just yep. kind of, you know, watch some soccer, watch some 11 year olds t- under, un, under 11s play some soccer and hung out and grilled some burgers and pretty much just, uh, just chilled out by the pool with some friends of ours on the team. Well, the, the free kick video that I saw that you sent was amazing that he stopped when the kid kicked it over the wall and Carter knocked it over the goal. That was pretty sweet. Yeah. And then if he... You watch, if, you watch the, if you watch the highlights, I, I basically put together a, a, a reel for him on Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, um, at jpdog04, um, if you follow me on Instagram, you can um, check out his Carter Powell's highlights. Yeah, and and he I I understand he got some words of encouragement from Kareem before the championship game <laughs> as well. I believe that he did. I believe that he did. <laughs> so did he receive that? I know I sent it. He did. Okay. Okay. He did. He had a, he got a big kick. He got a big kick out of that. Okay. He said he said it was great. Um, uh, yeah, we had a he had a, he had a final. Um, but yeah, we. Um, we made it to the final, but we didn't. We didn't come home with the first place trophy um, or first place medal, I guess I should say. Um, the team that they played was pretty tough, um, but he definitely was. You know, he was probably the player of the tournament. You know, I know I'm biased, but <laughs> he, he played really well. He played really well. Yeah, he saved a PK, and unfortunately, when you go to look at the highlights, it's like a dad fail. He <laughs> saved a PK. He saved a PK in the final, and I totally missed it. But it was like major, major props. Which you know, when when he made that save, um, there happened to be um, an Olympic development coach that was there scouting because mm-hmm. um, there was a lot of talent at that tournament. And um, he came up and started asking me about Carter. So we lost the lost the game, lost the final, but um, he played well. And got some recognition out of it. He's going to be trying out for the Olympic development team. That's pretty sweet. I wasn't sure what the O was in ODA when you sent me that. So now I know. So thank you. You're answering my questions yeah, it's, it's, that I didn't even have to ask. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's part of the ODP program, which when you and I were growing up um, back in the day, um, ODP was like the be-all, end-all. And it kind of died off there. But they've they've made some, some inroads, as I understand. And... Um, there's, it's definitely a big program for the state of Georgia now. I definitely wasn't involved at all because I was playing at Mount Pisgah and Fripp Dog was my coach. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I played in, you know, I'm from Peachtree City, so I played with a lot of guys that were in the, in the, in the pool back in the day, and I myself wasn't, but I, I knew all, I knew of all about all the guys because I played against them in some of the clubs. But anyway, we're. We're on so, totally off the rails. So, at this so point. let me go back to DJ Uwe Ung, Uwe Ungulale. So the commercial is it basically has like commercial inception because there's a commercial inside of the commercial. So like in the commercial, okay. like the uh, Bosworths character is like watching TV, and there's a commercial <laughs> on that TV with Uwe Ungulale is in that. So that's how, <laughs> kind of how they worked it in. But then like so that happened, okay. and then I don't know. This is where my brain goes. Uh, like I've seen a lot this week or something else happened this week that made me realize something. So the first time I ever heard of, I'm just going to say DJ was when he was on the show QB one. So I I can't remember if you watched that show or not. It was called like QB one beyond the lights. Is the show that from was, was that on. the one was that the, I was about to say, was that the one that from and fields was on? Yes. So was it the same one or was it a different so, season? 
uh, Uwe Ungalale was in the Fields, Justin Fields season, not the Jake Fromm season. Okay. And so the, That's what I thought. The, the connections and the intertwining that continue to happen with, the, with that show are just so crazy to me. So you've got, you know, season one had Jake Fromm um, and, um, and Tate Martell, right? So Tate Martell is a guy oh, that yeah. has transferred multiple times now, but he started out at Ohio State, right? So then, uh, right. and then you get, you get Fromm goes to Georgia, and then after season two, Fields comes to Georgia. And then, you know, Fields leaves Georgia, goes to Ohio State, which then Tate Martell transfers out. And then... Uh, Dewan Mathis, Mathis had been a, an Ohio State commit, right? Then he ends up at Georgia. Right. All right. So mm-hmm. now, Dewan Mathis, after last season, transfers to Temple. And I don't know if you saw, like, Dewan Mathis won the starting job at Temple. And yes. the guy that he beat out was also on season two of uh, QB1. <laughs> he was the starting, okay. he was a start, he was the guy who, his name is Real Mitchell. Okay, and he was the guy. He was like the starting Q uh, quarterback that was supposed to be the focus, of, or one of the players it was focused on. He ends up getting benched, and he lost his job to DJ Uwe Ungalale. So DJ Uwe Ungalale was like an underclassman and took the guy's job, like during the season. <laughs> that guy, so Real Mitchell went to Iowa State. He ended up transferring to Temple, and now he just got beat out for the starting job at Temple by Dewan Mathis. So I don't know. Like it's so crazy to me. Like how all these guys from that show keep, I guess Mathis, not technically, but you know, he, he has at least some relation there, right. From the reason he left Ohio state was fields went there and all this stuff. And then runs into the real Mitchell thing. I don't know the whole, it's just, it's crazy to me how many guys from that show, the way their careers are panned out. This sounds like a beautiful mind, like, like <laughs> yeah. Russell, Russell Crowe, like yeah. talking about the butterfly effect of, uh, of Jake Fromm, like, the butterfly wings flapped in the state of Georgia. And exactly. Tom exactly. That's totally decided what it's like. to come to Georgia. Totally what it's like. Uh, so, anyway, so that was my yeah, random. A, a hurricane in college football. <laughs> yeah. So oh, that was my random tidbit. So another thing we saw this week was finally the official announcement came out. Uh, this had been long rumored and reported by, I think, Chip Towers a while back, but it was officially announced that uh, DJ Shockley is going to be the sideline reporter. So we've been waiting to officially hear who Chuck Daddle's replacement would be. He stepped down. Uh, so, yeah, so we got Shockley joining the the broadcast team. He's, he's the new Lauren. The new Lauren. The new Lauren. <laughs> DJ, what do you got? <laughs> can, uh, we get that, can we get that <laughs> dialed up? Yeah. <laughs> uh, if, it, if that happens, that's totally going on the, on the sound list. Scott, <laughs> make it happen, bro. Yeah. Is it, I mean, is, it talk D, about, is it DJ, what do you got? Or is it Shock, Shock, Shock what do you got? Shock, what do you got? I don't, we'll have to see. We'll have to see how, how that goes. I think he's, I think he's going to go Shock, what do you got? I, I, that, would be, that would be pretty good. That's a good one. I mean, you can't go wrong either way. Because, I mean, talk about like a great, a great story just for the university. Obviously, hats off to the young man. Um, I mean, DJ is such a great ambassador and message for the university. Like you look at in such a, in a day and age, a day and age where you've got guys that like, if they don't start day one, they leave. Mm-hmm. And he stayed, he conquered, he came an injury away from having probably one of the great UGA seasons. It still was a great season um, yeah. on his 2005 journey, but um you know, for him to graduate from the university, to be an ambassador for the university for many years, played in the NFL for a little bit, um, still hyped the university, still does to this day, lives in the state and has made a, has made a career um, here. And now he's representing us on the sideline. Like, man, that's just chef's kiss. Ah. It is awesome. I mean, like last year I was excited every time he was, you know, like the color analyst on ESPN or SEC Network for any of our games. For sure. Um, and like, and he did a really good job, I thought. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I'm super pumped. And as we've talked about before, I used to be like headphones in the stadium guy, <laughs> for sure, <laughs> like in college uh, and even for a while after college. So I don't know. Now I may have to see, like here in Charlotte, like is 
you know, what frequency, you know, cause they usually broadcast on a frequency inside the stadium. So I don't know, man, I may have to, uh, may have to, I don't know. <laughs> Although now that I'm saying that I'm going to have to like go on Amazon and order. <laughs> I'm not going to have a radio anymore. Uh, I don't know, may have to bring that back. We'd love to hear the, the, the Shockley sideline reports. I do wonder how many times he was the, uh, the subject of a Lauren sideline report back in the day. I'm, I'm sure we could <laughs> dig into the archives and, and find Lauren talking about DJ at some point. That'd be awesome. That would be funny. Um, when did, when did Chuck, when did Chuck start doing it? Oh, uh, it's a good question. I'm trying because I do feel like, uh, okay, this is, I would have to look it up, but in my head, Chuck was there. Uh, I want to say Chuck was actually with, no, I can't be right. Like who, who's, who stopped first Lauren or Munson? I was starting to say Lauren stopped first and Chuck was there at the end with Munson, but now I'm questioning myself on that one. But there's not so there's not any there's not any chance that Chuck was announcing Shockley, right? Like that for sure. When, no, no, that I, was for I sure so. on that, right? I'm pretty okay. sure it was still Lauren back then in 05. I'm yeah. sure someone on Twitter will correct us. Well, hold on. Let me let me try to figure this out. Trying to put glasses on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I don't know how much the soundboard is, but can we put a PayPal out so we can keep it and build on it? <laughs> uh, Drop so us good. a Venmo and I might got a buy guy. So good. I don't know, I don't know. We might have to do a Patreon. <laughs> might have to do a Patreon to keep the soundboard going. <laughs> uh. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Stepped down from his sideline role in 2010. Okay. So that means Lauren did continue when Scott took over. Because Munson's last 2007, 2000, yeah, 2007, 2008 was the first Scott Howard year. Um, mm-hmm. Full year seven was like split. So in seven, Munson did the home games and the tech game. Um, and then in eight, 2008 Scott Howard took over so it looks like Lauren was on the sideline till 2010 so so yeah so when DJ was in school it was definitely Lauren okay I mean that that like linearly like made sense in my head but like I wasn't sure I was I was like yearning I was yearning for an amazing story about Chuck Dowdle calling DJ Shockley and then him handing the reins to him that would have been amazing yeah, but I feel like it's even more amazing that there is probably some like, Lauren, what do you got? Well, Larry, I'm standing down here on the sideline next to DJ Shockley. <laughs> uh, um, I've got a good stuff. I got a few things from media availability. Um, okay. From over the week, so we had some players speak. We've had Kirby. Uh, one thing I jotted down. I don't know if you saw this. You know, last week we had a, a question from Trill, Trill Belichick around over under sacks for Adam Anderson. I think he had said it be, at like seven, I believe, right? I believe we had a few over under. <laughs> we had a few. We had a few from him. <laughs> oh, <gosh>. uh, <laughs> but Adam Anderson has set a personal goal of 20 sacks. I don't know if you saw that. So yeah, pretty lofty, pretty lofty. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that and I was thinking to myself, dang, son. <laughs> I, I personally... I, I personally think that I, I personally hope that he achieves his goal and yeah. proves me wrong, <laughs> yes. completely wrong, yes. like utterly and hopelessly wrong. <laughs> true, true. Agreed, agreed. Um, so I was there, and then I know, like, so today uh, the guys I had jotted down were John Fitzpatrick. So he talked. You know, there's been some question marks about whether he was going to be able to play or not, um, and he said that he's good to go. So that was good news. Um, and talked about the, the fact that the tight end room is loaded, uh, was, was his words. So hopefully that bears well for the game. And then uh, JT. Oh, go ahead. Well, loaded in the sense of... I, like, I don't know. That was the thing. I didn't hear the whole is, Does the whole that thing. mean that Darnell's going to play? No, no. Well, <laughs> well you, know how, you know how Kirby feels about Darnell. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. He, he, he uses the word. <laughs> I think he always uses it. Um, but yeah, I know. I mean, I think he was just saying he was talking more in general. Um, 
because I think based, I think generally, you know, people are talking about Darnell being, you know, injured, a reek, not being with the team, et cetera. So, uh, but he said it's still loaded. So, hmm. um, yeah, we got what? Let's see, we got Fitzpatrick, mm-hmm. Bowers, ba- who else? Yeah, Brock I mean, Bowers. obviously Washington. So yeah. Uh, Ooh, ooh, you know what? I don't know if this was on the pronunciation guide or not. I, I did not have his in the. Uh, I have to look it up, but it was like Ryland, it's either Goad or Goody. Like, Goody, yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah, he's, he's there. I don't know. I could look it up. Okay. I do not. I do not have that one. <laughs> I do not have that one. Come on, up Scott. Like some of the other ones. Hey, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give Scott a call. And we'll, we'll have, he'll he'll chime in later. Yeah, Robert Beal. <laughs> <laughs> I do still love that one, just in case you weren't sure how to say it. Um, apparently, apparently Scott is in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so, so JT had some availability. Uh, the, the things that stood out to me that he said was he, you know, basically on the injury front, right? They were asking about all of the offensive guys that are out, and you know, he said right. that he's that we do have a lot of guys that he feels comfortable with, and so he's got no concerns on the injuries from that front because uh, he's got enough the guys that he's comfortable with. And then um, I think just like warms my heart that he also said this, that people were, that he got a question around like the difference between California and the Southeast. And he said, football is just another thing on the West coast, whereas it is the thing here. So agreed. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that's like the most California way of describing the sec. It just means more. <laughs> motto right right, <laughs> right. Uh, like for us it's like it's like the sec it it just means more right, <laughs> right. and he's like in california it's, <laughs> it's just one thing but here it's, it's one the thing. thing here it's the <laughs> thing uh so I just I don't know why I don't know why uh, it probably it probably has to do with the fact that he you know his uh, his mustache <laughs> his mustachio situation when he first arrived yeah but I always just imagine JT talking like he is Doc Holliday <laughs> oh yeah I mean like you have to think of it that way I, don't know. I mean I know he doesn't sound that way but that's just how I imagine him in my head <laughs> right like that's 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 the JT my my JT Daniels is. Is is Doc Holiday from Tombstone? <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I've, I've been so now. I'm like not going to be able to unthink that. So it's just going to be the the same the same thing. Uh, but yeah. So then uh, Kirby. So all right. So I had jotted this down because you tweeted this, but I think you like had it backwards because you were like warms that the oh, Kirby crap. said. What I do now? Kirby said this because he said something about the defense being the most experienced returning defense one of the most experienced returning defenses he, he's ever seen. But he was talking about Clemson. He wasn't talking about our defense. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he was just saying, like, how many Must guys have got Must have been the bourbon talking again. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Could have been. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, I don't know. So that that, that, that wasn't, wasn't super great. But, I don't know. I mean, it was very, very much uh, coach speak today, right? So there was that comment. Then he – he also said that he's extremely confident in JT Daniels' preparation, but his concern is the guys that we need to block and the guys around JT. So again, like I said, today was very much like kind of toning things down, you know, and making us Munson. Uh, <laughs> it was it was that Kirby gif. Calm the f down. Right. Exactly. Exactly. He's, he's bringing he's bringing us all back down there. Um, and, <laughs> And then on his injury front, or just availability, he did like reiterate that Avery Gilbert is not with the team right now, and his comment was that we're praying for him each and every day that he can come back healthy. So we'll just second that. Um, and then uh, Warren Erickson, though the center, so he did say he's available. Available was the word he used. So I don't know. We'll see because it sounds like he hurt his snapping hand, and I guess he can snap with both hands. Um, so I don't know. So we'll see whether he starts or not. Um, uh-huh. and then, uh, we've got, let's see, Darnell Washington and Tyke Smith. He said they're moving around well. And then that is where he comes in with the hopeful, <laughs> uh, but he's, he, <laughs> he said, he said he's hopeful. Both of those guys will be healthy soon. So he, he didn't go with the, I'm hopeful they'll play this week. He said he's hopeful they'll be healthy soon. So th- those were the things that, uh, stood out to me today. Listening. Hopeful is doing a lot of heavy lifting there, Curbs. Yeah. 
He didn't say anything about being full <laughs> tilt. I, I did not hear that. So I don't know. So maybe that was a one time <laughs> thing last week. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like we're this is like a seven six shirt. Like we need to have one side that's like hopeful, and on the back it says full tilt. <laughs> Chase, Chase, if you're listening, print the t-shirts. Print the t-shirts. Uh, it could even like be like you know like a sad Kirby, and then on the back it's like the Kirby, the Jumpman Kirby. Right, right, right. Although, yeah, I'm, full tilt. I, I'm sure Chase could improve it. Like like on on was it Friday where we were tweeting out like the text thread idea shirt that was like red helmets and red Jersey oh. and red bridges <laughs> and inside <laughs> yeah. and inside sources and color rush. <laughs> yeah. 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 I remember Chase's improvement <laughs> was that our, that we should have had a red font text on the red shirt and that would have made it better. <laughs> so <laughs> just make the whole thing. Red. <laughs> uh, so, but anyways, all right. I, I don't know. I guess we can walk through the game a bit. I know like last season when we were going through this stuff, we would kind of take a look at like our offense, their defense, their defense, our offense, mm-hmm. and talk a little special teams. I'll, I'll admit like it's, it's kind of hard right now with literally zero sample size of, ev- of everything. The first game. Um, well, I think, uh, you know, if, so, in my opinion, if you're looking at this game and you're looking at how things are going to flow, just like every just like every football game, like yeah. I don't want to sound like a, a jack wagon, but like the game ultimately comes down to the line of scrimmage, and yeah. fortunately, dog stats went through all of the weeds with PFF sports, right? Yep. Today. That yep. was something that I kind of dug through. I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't comb through every last detail because at the end of the day, there's a nice little synopsis and it's like basically, you know, our offense matches up with their defense very competitively. And it's ultimately going to be good on good when the pads start hitting that line of scrimmage is ultimately going to call it. And if you were looking at the PFF grades, which if you're the type of person that looks at that type of thing and finds that important, mm. um, which I know there's, there's, there's definitely some folks that don't believe in it, but um, cause you see it on the Twitters, right? Yeah. Like, some, like they, they grade people for the draft and sometimes they don't pan out and it's like, right. whoa, PFF graded them. So <laughs> anyway, I personally enjoy some of those grades just in general because it helps give me at least at least some sort of direction on what kind of talent you have. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you were looking at it, the edge slightly in the favor of the UGA offensive line. And if you're looking at it, you know, the edge slightly in the defensive side for us as well. So like yeah. I mean Yeah, I so I read going, that I read that tonight as well when when Josh uh-huh. tweeted it. I will say, first mm-hmm. off, it was like I'm I'm with you. Like it was awesome. It was really well done. Um, I thought I don't know. I enjoyed yeah. reading through that. Probably that was one of my most enjoyable Josh reads ever. Honestly, um, I know he's he was doing stuff over at Bulldog Illustrated usually last year, and now he's posting his stuff over at at, at Dog Sports. Um, it was very good. It was it, it was very good. He 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 did have a lot in there, so I would definitely recommend checking him out. It, it made me feel. I don't know. It made me feel better looking at it, honestly. So anyway, sorry, continue. Yeah. 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 I mean, exactly. I mean, it made me feel really solid about what the trenches look like because ultimately the game, ultimately what all of our concern going into the season, when you're looking at all of our preseason nonsense and all of the BS that we're talking about, like (laughs) at the end of the day, the biggest concern that we have is can the offensive line create holes and create push mm-hmm. and hold off their that that defensive line enough to let JT Daniels just just bomb and air raid the hell out of the the you know the Clemson defense. Yeah. Um, because we know we're gonna take shots, we know we're gonna do it. In order to do that, you gotta have protection. And we know we're gonna run the ball because we know we have to. Yep. Um the Munkin has done that at every step that he's been there. And so it's like, in order to do that, you have to control the trenches and the way that it shapes up, it looks like the edge from a PFF perspective was in, in the boat of Georgia, not by a lot, but yeah. if you were looking for an edge, that was where it was. Yeah. And that definitely doesn't show up in the odds. 
uh, the <laughs> Ozmakers, yeah, for which sure. I know we'll get to. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, I agreed. Um, and <laughs> so I, I love that, like, our preparation is like you're referencing uh, Josh's article. And the first thing I had some bullet points in my first one was something I saw on Dog Sports Live, <laughs> which is like Josh and Graham. Um, because when they why are we even here? Let's just yeah, we're talking about that. <laughs> the, the one, the, well, the, oh my gosh, I went back, I re, I rewatched theirs today, and it was pretty, it was pretty funny from like one week to the next, because uh, I think they had looked at like our offense, you know, against Clemson's, like what our offense does well, and then what Clemson's defense is susceptible to. Um, and, but it was all like uh, the tight end, and we have great tight ends, and then like the, the next one was like right after Washington had gotten hurt. And Graham was like beside himself, mm. which I saw it back then, but like rewatching it to, today was like another, another blow. But the other thing they mentioned was inside zone. And I think that came up in your thread tonight as well. Um, I mean, that is our, that's our bread and butter play, right? Like as far as the running game, right? Is that inside zone? That's the, that's like our number one running play that we run. Um, I would say even like still, like we ran it a ton, a ton last year. And, you know, there is a, there's a, that's what Ohio State, did to them last year that's how they gashed them running the ball right they gashed them running the ball up the middle and then they were thrown to the tight end and thrown over the middle so i, I even okay. I, i'll say even without washington i think with fitzpatrick and then with with bowers i think we can still do that so so here so here's my thing so are we talking an inside zone like we're it's a straight running back play or are we talking an inside zone read well so that that was always that was the Coley issue, right? Because it was always the inside <laughs> well, our, zone give. But if it would have been a read, like Fromm would still be running on many plays, right? Well, yeah, all right. So you got that. So here's my thing. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Like not all offensive coordinators are created equal. The, clearly, the upgrade on offensive coordinator is there substantially, right? We all saw it. The plays are there. The concern that I have is that does anybody truly think that JT Daniels is going to take the ball out and run? Well, that's a good point. That's a good so, point. So, like, we're kind of like, it better be inside zone run and we're blocking for it as opposed to peeling guys out in preparation for a keeper or something like that. But, like, yeah, I don't know. I just, it, it, it concerns me that if we're talking about, like, I don't know. I have I have PTSD, Jim. I have PTSD <laughs> from running it up the middle with Mark Rick. We're going to run it up, up the middle for two, three yards, two times, and then we're going to punt it when we run, run a pass. And it's incomplete, and it's like, oh. I, okay, but so <sighs> let me let me let me, up the gut. Let, up me the gut. let me stop up you gut, really quick, though, incomplete. Be, because so <laughs> if, if anyone, if, if you didn't see, uh, we dropped a, a 2021 season hype video today on our YouTube channel. Which, full disclosure, is my it was my old. I had a YouTube channel that was related to my old blog, which is, I guess, technically it still exists, but like I don't post to it anymore. And so we've converted that over to the My God Podcast YouTube channel. And so I've been doing a lot of, like, looking through old games, trying to find the right plays to throw into that hype video, right? And if you go watch the <laughs> hype video, John, you will see we had many of our breakaway long touchdown runs were just that they was running between the tackles out of the shotgun. Right. So, and, and it was multiple guys doing it. I mean, James Cook had a, had a long one against South Carolina. Uh, Zamir white had did it against, I think he did it against Missouri. I know he did it against Kentucky. So I don't know. Like I, I, I will say too, like, I know everyone wants Kirby to open the offense up. And I think, I think you can make the statement that he already did or whether you say he did or Munkin did or whatever. The offense was opened up last year. And it's like what you just said, John, that the plays were there. We just weren't making the plays because frankly, until the last four games, we didn't have the right quarterback to get the ball to the receivers. And that couldn't keep everything honest. Right. And then everything really clicked there at the end of the year. So, I mean, I, we're still going to run the ball. Right. I mean, we're not going to just not run the ball, Like we've got, and we've got five really good running backs. So I, I do still expect a heavy dose of Zamir white for sure. Like, I don't think that's, that's not going anywhere. Right. Well, I definitely, I definitely have much more confidence on execution yeah. um, with the current offensive coordinator that we have 
in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as well as the offensive line situation. So, you know, I think that, um, I don't know. I, you mentioned it earlier, earlier about the, the, the Kirby has concerns about the guys surrounding <laughs> JT. Like <Yeah>. my, <laughs> Munsoning in, like, Munson intensifies. <laughs> Munsoning intensifies dot uh, gif. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, no, it, it definitely was not a, a settling feeling when he tweeted that. I get, I, I mentioned that it was like a yeah. uh, back down to reality of like, man, being hyped, like, oh yeah, we got it, we figured it out. Like, it sounds like it sounded like the offensive line. I mean, yeah, Buck Baloo hyping hyping the offensive line, and saying I have zero concern. Mm-hmm. True, <laughs> true. Well, I mean, I don't so, know it's, that. So that's something that I'm definitely super curious to see, right? Like. Again, is Eric to the center? Is it Van Prangranger? Is it Salyer? Right? That I'm really curious to see that, and just to see what the makeup of it, makeup of it is, and who's coming in and out. Um, so here's so here's my here's my scenario. If if the often like we, we we've talked about the weaknesses of of our team. Yeah. Uh, if if the defensive on the defensive side, the, the cornerbacks and the secondary ha- have been the question mark, right? Mm-hmm. On the offensive side, it's the offensive line's consistency. Yep. And I guess, I mean, to this point, obviously with the off season, like maybe the tight end. Although there's a lot of smoke that Mr. Bowers is going to have a coming out party here coming up on Saturday, right? Um, which I am here for the surprise tight end. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, all right. So if, if one of those two areas ends up being a strength, I feel like that we're going to be good. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if both of those end up being what we are worried about, knock on your head, Jim, like it it could be a long day in Charlotte. Um, Mm -hmm. if one of those two, if we can shut them down on defense and keep it close, we can eke out a win and maybe cover the spread, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but on the on the flip side, if the offensive line can get rocking and rolling, I'm taking. I mean, at that point, the over is the over is going to be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if the offensive line is rolling and the secondary is not, then we're looking at a high scoring affair. Yeah. I mean, I we're gonna have to we're gonna have to put up some points. I mean, right. I mean, like, like we said, in, that was our problem in 18, 19, and even 20, right? Like we would run into the juggernaut offense. We couldn't keep up. So, I mean, we're going to have yeah. to keep up, right? I mean, and, but their defense is good. Like, they've got a stacked – I mean, I think they're kind of similar to us, I believe, right? In, like, their front seven is, again, their strength. I know, like, Miles Murphy, uh, defensive end, is really good. Um so, I mean, it's, it's, it, <laughs> it's like you said, I mean, it is going to come down to the trenches. I mean, honestly, right. I mean, that's how every game is. And it's, I know it's a cliche, but I think that's what we'll, what we'll see here. Um, Such a cliche. It is, but especially with us, right. Like, especially with our questions on offensive line, the revamped offensive line, you know, in the bowl game, frankly, was not great. You know, so is it that same five? Have there been changes? What improvements have been made? No. Is that, we'll see. The revamped offensive line with a full off season and fall camp in exactly. place to install the existing offense. So that's what yeah. we're like. Honestly, it's gonna. This is gonna be an audition on the strength of Matt Luke's coaching profile, if you ask me. Yeah. Like, because we saw last year, the Kirby can coach defense. Um, Dan Lanning can coach can coach defense. Uh, we've got you know. Obviously, Scott Cochran's not there, but we can execute on on special teams. Um, mm-hmm. The plays were there from an offensive play calling standpoint. The talent wasn't there from a quarterbacking standpoint. the The big question mark came was when we had to rebuild our offensive line from the ground up, basically, um, because yeah. our our stalwarts were missing, basically. Um, so, when you have to do that in a matter of weeks, that's that's difficult to do for any team, regardless. I mean, you'd like to think that we could turn on a dime like the Alabamas of the world, but maybe that's not the reality for these guys just yet. I mean, obviously Luke was fairly new last year, but. So 
would it be fair to say that last year in the bowl game, it was a reshuffled offensive line, right? Because we had the guys leaving to go to the draft and we had to more on the fly. And then now we would hope, hope that it's a revamped offensive line, right? Because we've had the offseason and spring practice and, and fall camp to get them ready. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Hopefully we'll see it there. Um, you want to talk a little our defense there, offense? Um, I've got – Let's do it. I've got uh, – so on the Clemson side – you know, obviously, I mean, there's there's really two names that everyone's talking about, right? So obviously, with the quarterback, we um, You know, like I said, he was on that QB one show. He was a big time five star recruit out of high school. You know, last year, you know, really primarily backup duty behind Lawrence, except for when he was out with COVID. So had two starts. Um, he went one and one uh, as a starter. Um, with the one loss being at Notre Dame. And then Clemson obviously got revenge on Notre Dame in the ACC, ACC championship game. Um, but in those two games, he did throw for over 300 yards in both of those starts. So big time, big time talent, like quarterback, obviously. Um, and then Justin Ross, right? So Justin Ross, uh, so he's actually 10th in career touchdown receptions all time at Clemson. Um, sat out all last year. He had spinal surgery. Uh, so he's coming back. And so he, he has been cleared and Clemson has released a depth chart and he is listed as a starting wide receiver on their depth chart. So that does look legit. Um, that's obviously something to watch uh, to see what what he looks like. Uh, he's going to be knocking some roughs off, obviously, right after being out for an entire year. Um, mm-hmm. So that'll be that'll be super interesting, um, you know, to, to watch for on, on their side. Um, and then, uh, I mean, <laughs> the, the, the thing I really want to see is who are we putting on him? I mean, if, if we, if we, I mean, how often, I guess Kendrick, the guy we're going to put on Ross, I would, I mean, maybe, maybe, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. That'll be interesting to see how, how, how often he's, how often those two guys are lined up across from each other. Um, I know Kirby got asked about Kendrick a lot today, um, around like, what it'll be like for him playing against his old team, and everything, and I think he, in general, he was just saying he, they need to make sure he can keep his emotions in check because he's going to be he's going to be fired up playing against his old team. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that that's definitely going to be a storyline to watch for sure. Yeah, I don't know. The pessimist in me is like, well, you know, I guess Dabo let him go, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, he let him go because he didn't want him, you know, that kind of BS. <laughs> right, um, right. I don't know, man. Uh, I just – I I think that if we can – if we can get push along the line of scrimmage, yeah. the push that we're capable of doing, and we all know that we're capable of doing and that we all harped on Kirby for so long is that, man, we just – you have basically all these pressures and no sacks, that yeah. kind of thing. It's yeah. like right. you're, you're just like you're just there. If they can get over that hump on the on the front seven kind mm-hmm. of thing, um, I don't care. I don't care who the hell lines up because we're gonna beat them. Yeah, like, yeah. If we can get push, if we can get push on both sides of the line of scrimmage, like those the, those types of battles snowball into victories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I so, think I think like on paper, I like our front seven over there, offensive line. Um, I don't know, and, and again, like let's we're gonna we're gonna find out, right? We're gonna see what what Adam Anderson can do as the guy, right? I mean, to this point, he's he's always flashed. He's been, but as a role player, he's always flashed, right? When he's in, and so now with him being that that three down player, right? What's he gonna What's he gonna look like? So, yep, but for I sure. mean. You know, we're going to have Jordan Davis taken up at least two guys in the middle. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay, so that's another thing that I was just, I, I was actually just about to mention Jordan Davis because, mm-hmm. you know, basically when he's in the game, I feel like that we are virtually unstoppable um, because he is just going to cause disruption in ways that are not seen on the stat sheet. Mm-hmm. So... You know, from a defensive perspective, I mean, frankly, if Jordan Davis is in the in the game and we have all all those five star, four star talents that are 
in our depth chart. Mm. I mean, you can basically throw a, you can basically throw a dart at the board, and you've got a blue chip player at any position along the defensive along the defensive secondary, for linebacking core, star position, uh, defensive line, everywhere up and down the field. You're gonna you're gonna have a quality blue chip player in place. Um, yeah. So I'm not really too concerned about things from the defensive side. As long as we get pushed, if we don't get pushed and we get pushed around on the defensive side, like I said, it's going to be a long day Yeah. because eventually that guy is going to find open people and the wide receiving core, as we've seen in the past, they've got, they've got returning wide receivers and guys that we're really hoping we're not going to be healthy appear that they're going to be healthy. So, you know, having good wide receivers for a young young stud quarterback is going to help him settle in pretty quickly because I imagine they're not going to be taking too many deep shots early but if they start warming up they're going to they're going to they're going to start throwing over the top and if we don't get pushed on that offensive line it's going to be a long like I said it's going to be a long night in that in Charlotte but on the flip side and this is kind of where I'm going with this thing is that I'm not like I, the more I think about this and the more I've warmed up to the fact that we've got so many weapons on the offensive side, not that we don't on the defensive side, but we just have, mm. I just, I, I just don't see them stopping us on offense. I don't see anybody stopping us on offense, quite frankly. And again, it's going to come down to the offensive line. As yeah. long as they have, as long as they can have that consistency that we had when Stetson Bennett was the quarterback <laughs> for the university of Georgia. Yep. Cause, cause, Everything that we had when Stetson was the quarterback, we all saw it. It was like, dang, dump off there, deep ball there. If mm-hmm. it's on the money, it's there. Like, yeah. like when we had protection, when we had everything there, the, the world was your oyster, young sir. Um, and JT Daniels is that guy. And we saw it at the, end of the, at the end of the season. And if you look at the stats, I mean, I think the, the, the last four or five games, uh, we've hit the over on on points mm-hmm. we've hit the over on, on point totals when um when jt was in the game yeah so i mean against the spread uh, you know it's not super great for us but like i mean the fact is is that we've hit the over when jt daniels is that quarterback basically is what it comes down to and i'm taking the over on this one too yeah yeah, yeah. i think so too i will get to that but i i agree that's the thing i mean i, I feel like this is one of those to be Oh, we'll get into the macro overall thing. I, I guess my, you know, the concern if you look at this is that like their running game doesn't concern me. I mean, Etienne was by far their leading rusher, and he's in the NFL. Um, unfortunately, he just got hurt. But, um, but I mean, their leading returning rusher had 190 yards last year, so they're not returning this like stable of five backs like we are. Um, from as far as my knowledge, not I'm not a Clemson expert, but <laughs> just looking at it, they're, they're not returning anything like that on their end. So to me, it's going to come down to their passing game. Like you said, I mean, we've got, I think, you know, safety, I think we're set, right? But we're replacing both corners and we got Brini, you know, uh, played some star last year, but wasn't a starter. Um, so, I, so how do you protect those guys with a good pass rush, right? So that's where I, I do think it comes down to the trenches and, and how our defensive line can, can do on, on their line. Again, you know, I mean, stop the run. If you don't have to respect the run, then you can get after the quarterback. Right. So. I mean, I hate to go back to, I hate to you know trigger some folks out there on dog Twitter right now, but, um, or myself really. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you go Ben, don't break on these guys. Mm-hmm. Um, because like you said, we've got, we've got quality safeties at the back. And when you said that, I was like, you know what? He's right. Like as long as we keep the game in front of us, I like our chances. If we can keep the game in front of us um, and they don't go over the top too many times on our, on our safeties, like we can, we can control it. It gets gets down to like field position and things like that. Yeah. um, It's yeah. I mean, the more I think about it, I mean, it really does, just come down to how effective we're going to be on the offensive side of the ball, because I think that we've got enough there to hold them in check on the defensive side, regardless, because like you said, if they can't get the run game going, like, yeah. Yeah. And we can start dropping. If we can, if we can hold them with three, four, you know, linemen, you know, I, 
I don't, I don't know, man. I like our chances on the on the passing game, regardless of what happens. Like, yeah, they may take some chunks, like 10, 15, 20 yards, but, like, I don't think they're going to be going 40 and 30 yards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, you know, the, 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 the final phase that we haven't talked about is, is, is special teams. So, I know, like, we hit on it a bit last week, right? So, you know, we, we won't have Scott mm-hmm. Cochran, but we've got Muschamp has stepped in. But I know we kind of spread it out anyways. Um it does sound like I mean, so they have both of their kickers back as well. It sounds like like they've got they've got good kickers too, like we do. Um, so I don't know that I, we'll, we'll see um, how much of an effect that has because if both teams are pretty stout on on special teams, that might that may end up evening out. Um, but I definitely I don't know I, I love our special teams um, and when we're talking that field position game, right? One thing I do remember from last year is a lot of hidden yards were made up. Um, with the way Kyrus Jackson was fielding punts, frankly, right? He was always, you know, he could come up and, and cut that rolling punt off uh, before it rolled back and get a lot of, you know, like I said, hidden yards kind of there on the stat sheet. Um, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that on our side for the field position type stuff as well. So something you just mentioned, mm-hmm. Muschamp is going to be on the on the field, on the sidelines for us. He will be on. Yeah, we did. We did. We did. That came out of the press conference too. I can't believe I didn't mention that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not going to well, be in the booth. I, he's going to be on the sideline. I was just going to say that, like, I don't know if you can do this, but I'm going to make a rule right now. Like, mm-hmm. screw everybody else. Um, w- w- I'm going to go ahead and lay claim to the gif that he gonna, he's going to create <laughs> of screaming at some poor young kid, <laughs> and we're going to create that gif. <laughs> it's gonna have my God podcast tagged on to it, uh, Jim. I'm gonna need you to like pull that video as soon as it pops up so that we can claim it. <laughs> but uh, I'm calling dibs. I call dibs. <laughs> I call dibs on the must jam gift. Look, we are, we are, in the Georgia in a Georgia polo. We only put we only put the my God a podcast logo on the ones that we made. If, if we've retweeted something, you know, if you see it, you have to come up from our account. And there's not a my God a podcast logo on it. That means that we've found it from somewhere else. And we did not create it ourselves. So just, I don't know, uh, just, just want to throw that out there. We, we, don't, we don't claim that if, if our logo is not. <laughs> we do enjoy just, it. I just, we, we are admirers of the good gifts as well. We don't just create them. I'm going to make sure I have a battery pack with me at the tailgate, which we'll, and then we'll get to in a second. I'm going to make sure I have a battery pack with me so that I can tweet dibs <laughs> <laughs> as soon as it happens. <laughs> uh, awesome. All right, you want to get you want to hit into some listener questions before we do our final predictions? Um, uh, let's get. I mean, we were just talking about the tailgate. Do we need to talk about what, oh, that's what in we're there. doing? What's, your, what's that's in there? That's okay. in the listener questions. All right, all right. Then yes, let's. Why why don't we proceed to the questions? Let's Mr. do it, Mr. Wood. Uh, first <laughs> one comes from Hambone uh, at Hampton underscore Huggins. Um, we kind of talked about this one. How do you think Clemson's offensive line? will handle our elite pass rush. Um, uh, we're kind of hoping they don't, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that, I don't know. That's about all I got to say about it. I, I think we kind of talked through that one. Do you have anything to add on that one? I think that this is the, the toughest defense that they'll have ever, play, ever played before. Mm. Um, and I know that I think uh, I'm cheating a little bit, but um, I think one of the other questions was, you know, how many people are going to be in attendance or whatever. But I mean, yeah. I have a feeling that it's going to be a pretty hostile environment for, for him. Not that mm-hmm. Notre Dame wasn't a hostile environment for him previously, Yeah, but it just means more in the SEC. <laughs> That's right. Just as JT Daniels. Um, yeah. All right. Next one from Ethan Martin at UGA dogs, 1990. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what will be George's longest play from scrimmage? And will it be a run or a pass? I got very specific. 47 yards. <laughs> that was, uh, did you really? No, Is I, that I, really I, what you're going with? I, that, I, did, I wrote that down as a joke answer. I have no idea. I did. I did. I was reading through our media guide. Um, and so like some things I was remembering kind of offhand from last year. Like I do know our longest rushing play of the year was that first play against Florida. Uh, you know, when Zeus took it 75 yards. So we did have a 75 yard running play last year. Uh, I saw mm. in there, I, we had a lot of deep passing plays. Um, 
I know just against Mississippi State alone, we had multiple. I think there were 50-plus yards. So, mm-hmm. uh, I what's, your, what's, your final, what's your final answer? I'm going to stick with what I – I'll go 47 yards, and it's going to be a pass. That will be our longest play. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to go 65-yard pass to Brock Bowers. Oh, wow. Okay, I like that. I like for, that. A touch, for a touchdown. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, but if, if uh, that's, that's my, that's my dream. That's my dream. If I was being, re- if I'm being realistic, it'll be the QS Jackson. Oh, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> um, okay. Nick Moore at N Moore four, four, nine, two, which offensive line holds up the most in this game against the opposing team's defensive line. And I mean, I, I think, again, I think we kind of talked to this. I, I mean, I, I, we're basically saying we think it would be ours. George's offensive line. Can you push? Can you push this question? So you think it'll be about even? Over under. Look, I mean, both I teams be... both teams have a stronger defensive line than offensive line. I think that's fair to say, right? Right. Yeah. Right. I think that the I think that their offensive line is going to do okay with, but at the end of the day, as long as our defense, uh, I'm sorry, as long as our offensive line kind of, you know, performs, uh, you know, consistently. Like mm-hmm. that's the thing. Like I just, I'm, I'm just looking for some consistent play. Yeah, consistently good play. Right, <laughs> right, work. right. I'm looking for some consistently good play, and I think that that's what we should expect um, from a coach of this pedigree. And I think that that's what we should expect from a talent level perspective. Um, there's no more excuses. They had a full off season. They had a full install. Um. So if we see some tempo and they can actually get some push off of that, ooh, man. Yeah. He's still in my heart. Yeah, and I know uh, a thing I've uh, read about a lot lately, and I think I heard I heard this somewhere. I, I'm going to say it was on 100 Sanford because that's a weird thing. But around, like, Clemson likes to steal signs on, on defense, and that's been something that they've been kind of known for. So look for us to do things to try to uh, – to not allow them to, to, to see our offensive signs. Um, so we'll, we'll be something to watch for. Um, all right. Next one up from Aaron King at Aaron King on Twitter. Oh, he actually like got his name on, on Twitter. That's always good. Um, who is your breakout freshman this game? And I've got a feeling I know who you're going to say. Starts with a B rhymes with powers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if you're going to go with Brock Bowers, I'll, I'll give a defensive one. Although, uh, is it – well, I, he doesn't specify. So I'm going to say Keely Ringo, even though he's a redshirt freshman. Um, I, I think he's going to play. Um, but- All right. If you, really, if you really want to go – if you really want to boil it down. I, I, said, I said Brock Bowers because I think that he's going to have a coming out party. Yeah. However, if you want me to go with the person that I think that's going to have the most impact on this mm-hmm. – Amarius Mims. You think in in game one in this game? I think in game one. I think on I think the season. One. If you ask me, who's going to be the breakout freshman of the season? I mean, we did. Talk I would about say. That. I would say Mims. I don't know about this game. Although, who knows? This man. game. Right? This game specifically. Yeah, this game yeah. is tough. But again, that, that, right? Like, could he? Could he be an Andrew Thomas and start game one? He could. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I just, I just pulled, I just pulled a JP. Like I told you that my biggest impact. Play was going to be a 65 yard bomb to Brock Bowers, but he's not the most impacted freshman. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> what the hell? Hey, you did. That's like the time when you like, what did you do? The score, the score, I did not have to go under or something. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. This one we already addressed, but I just wanted to. This was like my favorite question. I thought this was pretty awesome that this came in as a listener question. So from Pain Dog at C6 Pain said, Did Carter win the tournament final? And like, you know, exclamation points and question marks. So. Unfortunately, no, but he did get a I, – I, I guess I didn't explain that earlier. I, I recorded like a voice message for Carter to listen to to try to give him some encouraging thoughts. Um, and Carter is a huge fan of the Second String podcast, uh, which obviously go check them out. We had Logan Booker on uh, during the offseason. Um, 
and Logan's had, yeah, got a great go sound, got a great soundboard, and they use the Corian Brown audio clips a lot. So I use some Corian uh, sound bites that, that well that I did <laughs> to, to try to help encourage Carter. We should so. probably share it with the Twitters and just let everybody know it. What a little I, inside baseball. What I, what I said to Carter. <laughs> we, we may have to do that. Yeah. Do that. Maybe uh, maybe just for pain. Just maybe just for pain. maybe yeah yeah for sure. <laughs> So that, that was a great question. So thank thanks for asking that. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was cool. I was I was like, oh wow. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> you you love us. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good question. Um, and then so uh, Micah at M Henson twenty four. How ready are you for the biggest dog tailgate in Charlotte? So hashtag ATD tailgate. I know my, Micah, uh, Micah is the guy I mentioned in our Iconic Rands episode with Chase that uh, my, I, I ran into him at Academy Sports one time and he had a 7.6 hat on and I was like, is that a 7.6 hat? And like, we, I don't know, I said something about that on Twitter to Chase and Micah was like, that was me. So, <laughs> so he's, in the, he's in the area. So he'll, he'll, he's, I know he, he's going to the game. Uh, he'll be at the tailgate. So I am ready. I'm super, I'm super excited. Um, I know the gif we put out today, it was like, when you see all your, when you see your crew at the tailgate and it was Garrison Hurst, you know, running into all the people at the hedges. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of, a lot of people here, you know, um, Fripp dog will be there. I think, you know, I think, think about, think about how many people are going to be laying eyes on each other for the first time. Not only just like, <laughs> so, just not only just like on Twitter, but like, just because like, I mean, I mean, we've been doing this for like a year. I haven't been to any games. Like, I yeah. mean, think about how many other people have connected over that time period that haven't like mm. actually physically met. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that there's going to be a lot of a lot of brotherhood going on, a lot of fellowship, as we say. Um, I think it's going to be it's going to be awesome, and I'm so looking forward to it. Like, I'm. I told my wife like, there's no way I'm going to be. I'm there's no way I'm going to miss this. Like. I yeah. missed I missed the Notre Dame. I missed Rose Bowl, but I feel like that this just has a different vibe. I don't know. Like, well, it is. Like I, a I think that it has a. It's a combination of the two. I feel like in many ways, I feel like it's a combination of the two because we're literally about to invade Charlotte, mm -hmm. and I think that they're going to literally paint the town red, and you're not even going to be able to tell that there's Clemson really <laughs> there. Um, at least on the streets, you know what I mean? Because I feel mm -hmm. like that a lot of people are going to be like me that don't have tickets, they roll in, which hashtag, if you got some tickets, <laughs> give them to me, I'll, I'll glad to take them. <laughs> uh, shameless plug, right. shameless plug there, but I'm right. planning on watching the game at the tailgate. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I think that there's, there's that aspect of it, the takeover, like we did in mm -hmm. Chicago slash Notre Dame. And then you've got the big time game atmosphere of the Rose Bowl. Yeah, and and, and the return yeah. and the return to full stadiums, right? I mean, you know, we talked about mm -hmm. last year. I mean, last year, yeah, I, mean, I haven't I haven't put much thought into this like I didn't go to a game last year. That was the first time I didn't go to the game since I was a kid, you know? I mean, I'm 41 years old. I, I think the last time I didn't go to a game in person was like I already, I already forgot what it was. It was like 92, 93, something like that. Like it was a long time ago. So it was very surreal, very weird for me to not go to any games. Um, so just the return to that, it's going to be full stadium. Um, <laughs> and from the like dog Twitter aspect, it's always fun to like meet someone uh, whose like Twitter name is not their actual name and like to be like, <laughs> like you know, like my dad, for example, like his is Frip Dog, and he'll be like, "I'm Frip Dog," and like, <laughs> like, it's always so classic. Like, I don't know if you've ever had any of those moments because, like, like now my Twitter name like has my actual name in it, but at a, at one point in time it, it didn't. And I remember like we had it was for a Georgia basketball game. My dad and I used to always go uh, once a year. We'd always go to we'd pick a game. We'd go to a game with my buddy Matt Moore, and uh matt brought one of his buddies and like we we met up at blind pig tavern before the game and like <laughs> matt's buddy like my t-shirt i was wearing he was like oh, i saw that t-shirt on twitter uh, i was like i was like yeah i tweeted today he was like oh like that was you and i was like yeah i'm bulldog blog and he was like oh i'm <laughs> you know i forget what his handle was at the time it was actually the guy that runs uh fb schedules um and that's what my dad was like. My dad literally said what I was just saying. He was like, I'm Frip Dog. 
<laughs> so, so, so spoiler, so spoiler alert. Um, you know, at, at F three, you know, we talked mm-hmm. about F three workouts. Yeah, everybody has their own nickname. So many of us have no idea <laughs> what our real what names are, <laughs> what their real names are. So it's similar. It's so a similar like, name. Yeah, like uh, I mean, even even at a national level, like. I mean, it's a national organization, right? And frankly, it's the it started in Charlotte, and I plan on working out there. Which I laid out a I laid down the gauntlet with uh, the the classic city guys and the Clemson guys to to work out on Saturday. I'm planning on working out at the Worm, they call it, uh, up in Charlotte, for uh, which is where F3 was actually founded. Um, it first originally started, so um, I imagine that there's going to be some folks that are looking for me up there. I will not be there. Sorry. <laughs> I know you. I know you won't. <laughs> if you're interested, if you're interested in actually attacking the day, Jim. I geez. know. Well, I I got. I'm in like my last week of the Pel- this Peloton thing that I'm doing. I actually will be working out that day, but from that. So. Hey. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. As so, long as you're, as yeah. long as you're getting after I am, it, man. I am. Or I, I just want some folks ready to go. You know what I mean? I think I convinced Logan to do the thing that I'm doing. I, I think. Uh, I think he may have just started the the program of I was working on. So. Wait, what's the program? Because I know Logan only does the like thirty minutes. He's like working his way up or something like that. So the so this one, well, I'm actually in the middle of two things, which I don't recommend doing. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying. I was like, I'm going to do one that's strength and then one that's riding, and I'm going to overlap day or every other day. It's a horrible idea. I, but whatever. We call it we call it double dipping. Yeah, it was, I should not have done it. Uh, but I was talking. <laughs> I, the one I was telling him about is a, it's called build your power zones. So it's like a riding one. So all the rides, it's like the endurance rides. So they're generally forty five minutes twice a week, and then an hour yeah. for the third day of the week is generally what. It okay, is. so so I didn't go. I didn't go work out. We have a peloton. Full disclosure. My wife got it during COVID. It was her thing. It wasn't my thing. It was her thing. But I jump on it when I, when I don't go to the workouts or whatever, or have a downtime. I, actually, it, you remember I hurt my ankle mm-hmm. and I was like trying to warm up. I was like, can I can I actually go work out again? And right. I was like, all right, well, let me try to, let me try to ride this bike. And I think one of the ones that I selected was the power zone workout. Yeah, there. Uh, like, yeah, you gotta know. You gotta figure out how to do those. Uh, like I tried one and I didn't know what I was doing, and my wife made fun. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, I you was totally to lost. It wasn't like the other rides. It no. wasn't like the other rides where it like tells you what what your resistance should be and all that stuff. Right. I have like, no idea what's going on. There's a test. I'm just gonna ride. I'm just gonna ride until I get 600 calories. Yeah, there's a test you have to take. <laughs> it's very confusing. And, and we'll talk about it. We'll have a my got a podcast stories Peloton episode, and then I'll explain it. <laughs> we will not. We will not do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's keep going. So uh, let's go to you want to go into into predictions, and we have a couple of listener predictions before we get into the actual. Are we doing predictions or are we doing over unders? That's doing? what we got. We got some over unders okay. first before we get. Um, all right. All right, all right. This one I don't think I sent to you because this is a leftover. Uh, when my dad asked like three weeks ago and accidentally included some Clemson questions, so we got tripped on the Georgia offense. Will the Georgia offense have more rushing yards or passing yards? Passing game. yards. Ooh, I'm going to say rushing yards. Starting off with some disagreement on my got a podcast this season. Um, over. Well, I, I, how many? How many more pass? How many more rushing yards do you think we're going to have? I mean, just. I think no. I think it. I I think it will be pretty balanced. I think it'll be pretty even, actually. Okay. Yeah. Although I don't know, now that you're like asking me all these questions, I feel like I should have said passing, but I'll stick to my guts. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, uh, uh, I don't know. I'm totally questioning myself and like feeling like an idiot. Like this guy doesn't know what, what he's I talking do? about. But remember, when we uh, do over unders and when we do like any kind of picks, it is not gambling advice because we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is for entertainment like, purposes like- only. It's like the disclaimer that we do at the workouts. I am not a professional. Right. If you get hurt, we'll help you to your car. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Uh, over under two turnovers for our defense. Over under two? Two turnovers for our defense. Ah. Uh, That's how you know it's a good over. Right, your right. groan lets me know it was a good over under set. It was a good line. It is. It is because I. All right. So here's. So here, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go push. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm going to go push because I think that we'll get a fumble mm-hmm. and I think that we'll get an interception. All right, so okay. here's here's my rationale. So I watched I watched the the video that you sent to me before we jumped on the podcast <laughs> of <Yeah. laughs> I watched yeah. the video and it was uh, uh, Clemson's quarterback uh, running. <laughs> I, I, I guess we should we should actually take a pause, like time out, time out. Mm-hmm. Um, we should take a pause and address the fact that Kirby Smarts r- refers to him as their quarterback. Oh yeah, because he can't pronounce the name. Yes. and neither can I, guys. <laughs> so their quarterback. I yes. saw him running. I saw him running into a wall of defenders. And I saw him do it multiple times against lesser teams. Yeah. And they were the we're talking Wake Forest, we're talking UNC, we're talking Virginia. So like Georgia Tech, um, Boston College, like these are not SEC defenses, these are not UGA defenses. If he does that against our team where he literally runs pigskin chest high into into the into the fray like he's going to fumble the ball like there, there's no doubt in my mind that there's going to be a fumble at some point yeah um and i do believe that our safeties are going to pick one off whether it's seen or smith i don't know um, i think scenes probably more likely if i'm being honest um i think we get a pick i think we get a fumble and that's why i think that it's a push okay this is amazing because you know i i i write these things down ahead of time and i wrote down push <laughs> so I, I will give one more uh graham coffee shout out on one thing that because one thing i saw he said that um i believe we we unga lole that is how you say it by the way i actually they have a pronunciation guide uh i read it on their on their website today um i think he had like Z- say it again say it again for everybody we unga lole I had been saying Ui Ungalele. It's not Lele, it's Lele. Ui Ungalele. Um, Say it 10 times fast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think I think he, Graham had pointed out, I think, like, again, like a PFF type thing. Uh, like, he had zero turnover worthy plays last year. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm with you, though. I And I would love to see that for this secondary, right? And again, if we can get pressure on him, um, that's what makes it happen. Um, Okay. Oh. Can someone have a trade? Can someone have a trade battle day? You know, someone's oh, completely man. like uh, looked over, just would, come up and with three interceptions and that, just call it a day. That would be amazing. <laughs> uh, over under three sacks for the Georgia defense. Oh. Oh, and I should have said I forgot <laughs> to say who this is from. So those last ones were from uh, my dad, Rip Dog. This is actually from uh, the DGD podcast. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I answered the last one first. I'm going to make you answer okay. this one because oh. I just groaned. I just groaned again, and I know it's a- sure. So over under three sacks, UJ defense push. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Which, All right, like, I'm going to go under. Okay. Which like push is like the worst one because like you know anything over three or uh, but whatever. I'm going to go. Okay, so you go under. I go push. Um, I'm going to go under because I think that they're going to be. I, all right, so I'm gonna go. I'm going under, and I'm, I like giving. I like giving rationale. Like you, you throw out a number. It's like okay, okay. Great. We can hear what the rationale. What does, rationale. That, mean? What does that mean? We can hear the rationale. I like hearing rationale. Uh, <laughs> my rationale is is that they're going to be training him. They've they've probably been drilling it into his head that he's got to get the ball out quick mm. because we've got so much speed up front. I expect that he's going to be making some quick throws, which is part of the reason why I think that he's going to make a poor throw at some point which is why I think Scene is going to have an interception mm. because he's going to make a poor decision really quickly because Adam Anderson or someone's going to be coming on third and long or something like that where he's going to be forced. So I, like I think that, I think that that's, I think that that's my, my rationale. And I don't think that they're going to let us get to the quarterback because if we do, they're in for a world of hurt. Rationale appreciated. <laughs> Uh, okay, last last listener uh, prediction. This is from uh, Jason Huggins at Hugdog18. More Georgia or Clemson fans in the stadium? I think uh, we've talked about it. I think we are in agreement. Georgia, we're gonna. It, it's gonna be a dog takeover. I I saw well, it was a, you know like I don't know maybe a month ago or a couple weeks ago. I think it was something with Feinbaum where. Someone had said something to the effect of like, well, Clem- or you know, Charlotte is a Clemson town, 
And I'll say, as someone who lives here, that is not close. That is not true. <laughs> I do not view Charlotte as a Clemson town by, by any means. Um, I mean, the, the only thing I will say is that, like, when the Panthers started, you know, before when Bank of America wasn't done, the Panthers actually played at Clemson early on. So I actually do have a buddy that, like, had, you know, was going to Panthers games and started going to sh- the Clemson games because of that. But uh, that's a long time ago. Like, that's 90s stuff. Uh, that hasn't lingered so much. I mean, SEC Network is headquartered in Charlotte. I don't know if you do that. Like, that this is where the SEC Network is. Um, Charlotte is very much a transplant town, just like Atlanta. Um, most people you meet are like me. Like, most people are not from here. So, like, most of my friends are, like, you know, it's like in Atlanta, right? Like most of your, you know, a lot of people you're friends with like aren't from Atlanta or whatever. And that's how it is here. Like most of my friends are from, they're from all over. I got friends from Florida, from New York, you know, wherever. Um, so I, 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 I hard disagree on, on Charlotte being a Clemson town. So I, 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 I do think, uh, I mean, we, we travel like crazy. Um, it's closer for them, but not, not by a whole lot. I, I expect to see more, more red than orange. Um, I gave my rationale, John. There's, there's. I hope, hope that, hopefully, that helped. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I would, I would tend to agree. I mean, like I said, I think, I think we talked about this previously, but it just means more. That's right. It just means more to us. I think that there's going to be a lot more Georgia folks there than, uh, than Clemson folks. Agreed. I mean, I'm actually, I'm actually kind of surprised. Like you said, the, the fact that. <laughs> I don't know how he did it, but like Greg, uh, Greg putting together this tailgate, the attack today tailgate, mm-hmm. um, it, it's, it's actually mind boggling when you look at what he's got set up. Yeah. How in the world does he have that much real estate literally right next to the stadium that, you know, the, the team that, that housed there is played at Clemson. Like how are they, how do they have that much real estate um, and that much runway to take over? Because that's, I don't know, yeah. man. I just think that this is – I think we're looking at a – and it's probably going to be even worse if I'm being totally transparent just because it's easier to get to. I mean, I'm coming up, mm. and it's a three-hour drive. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at like a two-day turnaround kind of thing. And I think that, you know, you got guys like Hunter who are driving through the night, that kind of thing. Like, right. I mean, yep. dog fans are inbound, Charlotte. Yep. We're all in. You, you've been warned. <laughs> uh, so speaking of Hunter, my next question, this was not a listener question, but I wanted to ask it. I, we talked about it last week, but I want to get okay. an, an official game prediction. Red jerseys and red pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I think, I think we're, I think we're, Wait, uh, actually, that's a uh, who's who's tag who's tagged the home team. We are the actually, home team. My understanding is we are the home team. Okay, so we're red and they're going to be white. That's my prediction. Okay, that's boring. <laughs> I agree. Wah wah. <laughs> we're going to be red. Red. So uh, I will say though, uh, tidbit: JT Daniels has yet to play a Georgia football game in a red jersey. Really? Yep. So for his first uh, play, I mean, he's dressed out, but he has not stepped on the field in an actual play in a red jersey. So his debut was Mississippi State. That was black jersey game. His second game was at South Carolina. We were on our road whites. His third game was at Missouri. Again, road whites. And then his fourth game, Peach Bowl, black jerseys. So we have Vanderbilt to thank for that because they canceled our senior day. He, he would have worn red in that game. But, uh, aha. Yep. So little, little, little tidbit there. All right. Interesting. That, that actually is a pretty fun tidbit. Yeah. So, okay. The actual predictions. So, um, I know we always look at Odd Shark, not a sponsor, but that's where we, <laughs> we, we go to look up for our odds. So for, I only like it because of the user experience. Yeah. I agree. Agreed. Um, all right, so they got Clemson is favored by three. The over under is fifty one and a half. Um, so when I I like to do my little math, I'm like, if you were to break the score just using that, 
um, that would be something along the lines of like Clemson wins like 27, 24, 28, 25, something like that, right? A three point win. That, that's, that's what the line says. Um, uh, you want to go, you want to go first or you want me to go first on this? Hmm. You go first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not going to get too, I mean, we've talked about this a lot, but so I'm not going to go too into depth on the, on the logic behind it. But in general, I do, I see it being, I see it being a tight game. Um, I think, I mean, everything we said, I think it's going to come down to the line of scrimmage. I think it's going to come down to field position. I can see it. I can see it coming down to special teams. So I'm going to take the over. Um, I'm going to take a Georgia win 31 to 28. Um, I'm not saying that will, it will necessarily be a, you know, jackpot mm. game winner. Like it's tied in 31, 28. Although if it, if it mm. does come down to that and it is a jackpot game winner, then we're going to have one of these situations. The stadium is worse than bonkers. <laughs> All right, over to you. Okay. Um, this is a tough one for me because it's it's like it's almost like you look at the you look at the spread, and then you look at what's going on on the predicted score. So basically, Clemson's predicted to win, cover, and hit the over. Um, yeah. Predicted score is. 41 to 31 basically which just seems just obnoxious to me for a game like this to have a 10 point win um in a game that basically looks like a push mm-hmm. for all intents purposes yeah um i don't know man i i just go back to look at the um i don't know man i Points per game is kind of what I'm I'm like relying on here with with Todd Munkin's you know history. Mm-hmm. I almost I, I mean I almost feel like that it's going to be flipped if not worse. Um, I think that we can hold these guys. I think we can hold them. Um, I don't know. I'm going to go 46 28, and I know that that's a ridiculous <laughs> score. But that's, I'm going 46. No, I I love your prediction. Your prediction. Your prediction crushes my prediction. <laughs> Hey, you're sticking to so, it. So, because a little, a little bit, uh, like you know, uh, a little behind the scenes, right? So, you know, I mean, last week, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm glad that you're in this space mentally because <laughs> last week it was if we don't win the SEC, the rails will fall off. <laughs> but then, within like within 24 hours, it was like hardcore munsoning like oh my gosh the sky is falling and then now we're back to you know a big a big win like that so i like it i like okay, it. we've so come for full in, circle in and, life, I, and i appreciate that in my life i don't have a lot of anxiety about like things <laughs> i just kind of have this i don't know i just have this personal kind of motto that everything's fine <laughs> which i realize like could also mean that my house is on fire like that gif or whatever a meme <laughs> Um, <laughs> this, this is fine. fine. Everything's fine. Fine. Uh, Everything's fine. Um, I don't know. I just feel like things work out in life. But when it comes to Georgia football, <laughs> I very much have anxiety about many things. Uh, it's largely due to PTSD from past regimes. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know, man. The more the more I think about this, the more I've I've looked at it. Like we've looked at it. We've actually beleaguered this, in my opinion, for everybody's beleaguered it because it's just been everything that we're talking about. Everything everybody's talking about is this game this yeah. weekend. So um, the more I hear and the more I feel and the more that I look at it and the more you look at the stats, it's like, okay, we got the edge on the line of scrimmage. I think that you give us the edge on the quarterback position. You give us the edge on the line on um, linebacker position. You give us the edge on running back position. The only thing that we have we don't have is wide receivers and frankly like but i think i feel like we, i feel like we do we do that's the thing that's the thing is that we are while we are missing wide receivers so obviously no pickens uh no Avery gilbert and blaylock has what, and blaylock hasn't been cleared yet right 
So we're missing but all that's them. What, but that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I think that, I mean, if you had to give an edge, you'd have to give it to Justin Ross. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The fact that yeah, he's, on, that's he's going to be on the field. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I think that having those having those guys returning is going to be a benefit. Now, the question is, what are these freshmen going to bring to the table? You know, a different different positions. I don't know. I just, the more I think about this, the more that you look objectively at it, like the more I think about it is on paper, I feel like this is a nice win for us. I mean, Jermaine, Jermaine Burton, Kiaris Jackson, <sighs> Adonai Mitchell, right? I mean, hey, Lad McConkey. I keep hearing, people keep uh, throwing out Lad McConkey this week. I don't know if he's going to be like this year's Rhett McGowan or something. I don't know. We'll see. Rat uh, poison. T- T- Rat TV. poison. Yeah, everybody's been throwing his name <laughs> out a lot. So I don't know. We'll see. Well, one thing that we didn't talk about when we're talking about the impact freshman on the defensive side, Smile, Smile London. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I think that that's gonna. I think he's gonna be an impact as well. He's one of those. He's one of those guys that everybody's been talking about too. Smile Munden. <laughs> <laughs> You know, my uh, our, our trial that allow, uh, now allows me to do that is, is going to run out. <laughs> so I got to I got to get it in. I got to get it in lock. Yeah. <laughs> eat, up, eat up all those trial. Eat up all that free trial. Well, but you know, and also, I mean, he is a freshman. So my God, a freshman! Yes. Oh, sorry. sorry. Do it. <laughs> uh, all right man well i don't know i think that i think that's probably it we've got our predictions uh i do want to say like thank you so much to all of our listeners who are checking in and again behind the scenes like when i tweeted that out and asked for questions today and the questions started pouring in like john you can uh you can verify this i, I texted you as like God, the, the listener questions are always so good. <laughs> like we had the best listeners, uh, so thank you so much. Yeah, seriously. Like we love, we really enjoy the interaction. Um, this it's been really cool. It was great all last year, and is already continuing this year. So thank you so much. It's 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 really cool. We really appreciate it. We really we really enjoy it. So uh, I don't know. Had, had to add. And that. we're looking forward. And we're looking forward to sharing a a bourbon possibly. With clear ice, oh. <laughs> with all of you, so very I, shortly. I was gonna say, like, you know, if you see a guy around Charlotte in either a "My Got a Podcast" hat or "My Got a Podcast" baseball pullover, or maybe <laughs> "My Got a Podcast" uh, polo, which I don't know, I feel like I need to do like a Twitter poll to help me decide what to wear to this game because I'm like having super anxiety. Like, I didn't go to any games last year. I've got some new stuff, so I've got a, you know, I, I've made a couple of things with our logo on it. So we've got the, we've got the hats. I've got a pullover. I got a, I, I don't know. Like, do I go, you know, Georgia Jeep, uh, like polo with the, my God podcast hat. Do I reverse? I don't know. I got to I'm, I'm having some anxiety about that. So I've got to make that decision by Friday. Uh, maybe it should be a Twitter <laughs> poll. What I, what I really want to do is have it like have Hunter make a graphic for my options. And then people can vote based off the graphic. I need to talk to Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh man you kids you kids i just i guess i'm just too much old man i just got like two options basically it's like <laughs> am i gonna wear this shirt or am i gonna wear that shirt um hey i'm older than you i'm older than you come on I, was, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know man you guys are you guys are over the top <laughs> uh, you and you and hunter you, you guys ball out on your on your off- outfits um <laughs> I think I did tell you that I was going to try to toy with getting a shirt to to put one of our patches on. So I'll either have, I will either be wearing a My Got a Podcast hat or I'll be wearing a My Got a Podcast shirt. Okay. Uh, That is for sure. So there are a few other um, hats out in the wild. So it's not guaranteed that it's, that it's one of us, but there's a decent chance. So if you see us, I feel like we need to like get some shirts to like throw out to people like we're celebrities or something. (laughs) How quickly can we get some shirts pulled up for this tailgate? Uh, I don't know. We probably need to ask for that before today. <laughs> uh, Oops. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. All righty. So, yeah. So, if you see anyone with a Mad Got a Podcast hat or polo on, there's a decent chance it's us. Say, say hello. We'll, we'll, be out. we'll be out and about uh, in Charlotte. We'll, we'll certainly be at ATD tailgate. So you can come find us there. Absolutely. All right. Well, I will see you if not 
if not Friday, we'll try to hook up Friday. If not Friday, I'll see you. I'll see you. I'll see you Saturday. So, looking forward to it, man. I'm super jacked. Amen. I'm, I'm looking forward to it as well. Um, coming up solo, so it's a little bit of a getaway, bit of a birthday trip for me as well. I know I had. I know I was in the Dominican, but like this is. This is also a birthday trip for me, too. It, it continues. It continues. You're stringing it's it birthday out. Birthday continues. You're stringing it out. <laughs> stringing out that 40th birthday. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> uh, all right, man. Well, I will, uh, I'll see you this weekend, and hopefully our predictions hold true. Absolutely. Go dogs. Go dogs.